The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, this teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Morning. So, we're coming to the end of a marathon of bread. For those of you who have noticed, we've actually had, this is our fourth week on Jesus' discourse on bread. That first week was the feeding of the 5,000, was the little boy who offered up humble bread and a few fish, and Jesus, who took, received from that little boy and fed 5,000 people. That humble bread that creates community and feeds so many. And then the next week we see, in the next part of the scripture, we see those people who had been fed all excited and they want to be fed more. So they follow Jesus all the way across the sea and they ask, is there more bread? We want more bread. And Jesus says, well, that's not actually the bread. I am the living bread. And the people are like, say what? Hmm? And then last week, we got the real, whoo, eat my body, Jesus tells them, drink my blood, and you will have eternal life. Obviously a taboo to drink some, eat somebody's body and drink their blood. So he's playing with that, shocking people, and shock them he did. And today we see the next progression of this. Christ 
as the living bread, the word of God, which we know now. We know that God isn't asking us to take a bite out of Jesus' flesh, literally. We know that Jesus is the word of God, the living bread. But today, we hear of disciples who turn away. Today, we hear of people for whom this teaching is really just too hard. And in some ways, I think that means they took it really seriously. They were really trying to figure out what the heck he was saying when he said, I am the living bread, eat my body and drink my blood. Often throughout the Gospels, Jesus teaches us these hard things. Asks the rich man to give away all of his money, tells the first that they're going to be last, and rather than bringing glory as the Messiah and defeating the Romans, he tells them all that he's actually here to suffer with us all and to die for us. He complicates the Sabbath. He eats with sinners. But I think in a way, this was the hardest lesson of all. You need to abide completely in me and open yourself up completely to me so that I can abide in you. This teaching is difficult, the disciples say. Who can accept it? I was thinking about times when I've had a teaching that felt crazy to me, and one of them that came up was I swam a lot as a kid, including on teams. It came up because we're in the Olympics. And when I was first swimming, we had this beautiful kick to get us going, right? You'd crawl and you'd kick. You go look at old Olympic things and you see this big, huge kick happening. You think strong legs, strong swimmer. So when I started doing triathlons and the swim coach for the triathlon said, don't use your legs. What? Don't use your legs? That doesn't make any sense at all. They actually had us drag our legs and only use our arms. They had buoy. Sometimes we'd have a buoy in there, and sometimes we'd just be asked to drag them along, holding them up with the support of our core. Seems weird, right? But if you look at the Olympic swimmers, they barely use their legs at all, and all of a sudden you realize that that kicking was actually slowing them down. I taught a swimmer once whose kicking made him go backwards. <laughs> so don't use your legs. It's a hard teaching. Counter, very counterintuitive. I also think of Luke on Dogaba when he's with Yoda. And he's trying to lift his ship out of the swamp with the force. And, 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 and he says to Yoda, Oh, you want the impossible. I can't do it. And Yoda says, you must learn what you have. You must unlearn what you have learned. <laughs> and finally, Yoda shows him, just as Jesus shows us. We have all of these Christ figures in our, in our um, culture. Yoda shows him. He takes his hand. You all know this scene, right? Even those of you who are young. I mean, this is, I was in high school when this movie came out. Yoda, that little guy, just lifts that thing right up out of the swamp. And what does Luke say? I don't believe it. And Yoda says, that is why you failed. Jesus is teaching an impossible thing. He's the living bread. Involved with him, that it is as if we are eating of his flesh and drinking of his blood. In a way, it is more literal than the actual eating and drinking that we do in our lives. Christ in us and us in Christ, living out his words in the world as him, by him, and through him believing in him with all our hearts and souls and mind. 
And because of this hard teaching, many of his disciples turned back, this gospel tells us, and no longer went about with him. As I look around me today, I think that in many, many ways, we Christians across the world are being asked the impossible. We're being asked to live these loving, faithful, vibrant, engaged lives. In the wake of secularization, a rise of atheism, deep, deep theological divisions and painful and lasting harms done by our own churches, our own faith tradition. And you see it in all of the people that are turning away. Turning away not just from the churches, but from their faith. From their belief. And turning instead to material things. And people are less and less comfortable claiming their faith as Christians. I'm guessing that many of you, if somebody if you would you go out and just say hey i'm a christian it's hard to hold on to that now it's very muddied very difficult as followers of christ so jesus asks the 12 after the other disciples those disciples have walked away he asks them, and I ask you today, do you also wish to go away? Following Jesus is hard. Our faith demands so much of us and feeds us also in ways that nothing else can. We live in this complicated and messy world and one that shifts in ways we can't control. But Christ doesn't force us to stay with him. We are free. We must come to Christ as willing participants in his body, in his work. He asks us, do you wish to go away? We're free to make that choice, to keep claiming and following our faith in Christ, in his love, his sacrifice for us on the cross, even in the face of very difficult teachings and revelations, or we can walk away, sometimes for a while, because Jesus always takes us back. And sometimes for a lifetime, but God is always with us. Those disciples that stay, stay because they have faith. Just as Luke stays, because there is a spark growing him in him, a sense of the truth that Yoda speaks. Simon Peter's answer to Jesus when Jesus asks this question, do you also wish to go away? is, Lord, to whom can we go? Think about that. To whom can we go? It's an important question as a church because we need to commit and recommit. To whom can we go? And he goes on to say, you have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. We have come to believe and know, believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. Christ is the Holy One of God. When we choose to stay to put our faith first, to hear the hard lessons, to believe fully and give ourselves over to Christ, loving God with all our heart and loving 
our neighbors as ourselves, we find eternal life. We recognize ourselves as part of this everlasting body and work of Christ. We abide in him and he in us, not because we made it happen, because it's always there, always loving, and Christ who sacrificed himself for us and came to live among us is always the one to whom we can go. So as you go out this week, and every day, I think, know that you are answering God's question, do you wish to go away and recommit? Give and receive graciously from the humblest. Know that Christ is the living bread and eat of Christ and drink of him and uh, abide in him and let him abide in you. Pray as Paul admonished the Ephesians, Ephesians pr pray every day. Be Christ's body in the world and stay the course. Even when things get hard, have faith and know that Christ is with you now and forevermore. Amen.